Hello everyone, welcome back, or welcome for the first time if you are new. It's the day of the week we've all been waiting for, Work in Progress Wednesday, the day of the week where we ask ourselves, am I really a writer if I don't have something going on right now? And the answer is yes, of course, um, but no, truly this is the day of the week where we're just going to be updating each other, you know, myself via video and yourself via the comments on the things we have going on in our writerly lives pertaining to our work. So today we're actually going to be talking about a book of mine that is actually no longer in progress. It's officially available for pre-order and uh, let's get started. So did you know how I got my start in professional writing? Children's books, actually. From 2011 to 2017, I worked on contract with a company called Teacher Creative Materials and Time for Kids to write children's books for use in the classroom. I love that job so much and recently I've taken an interest in working in children's books once more, but this time I want to do fiction. So for my kids' books, I am using a truncated pen name instead of Zach Lettercast, I'm using the name Zari Lett, and I am choosing to work with different artists of different styles and mediums for each story. And of course, if you're an artist, feel free to reach out to me in the comments or via my professional email, which is on my YouTube channel, uh, because I'm interested in working with you. This first book is titled Grey Gets a Tattoo, and it's illustrated in a really fun, playful digital anime style by an artist named Alexandria Marchand. She was fantastic to work with, and there's a link to her Fiverr in the description below. So I wrote a kid's book. It's titled Grey Gets a Tattoo. It's about a non-binary kid who gets a tattoo. And it sounds like something that would be banned in Alabama, and it probably will be. <laughs> but I feel that there is a strong need for children's books that encourage respect for kids' bodily autonomy and their creative spirit. The story is also an, albeit gentle and playful, analogy for having to wait for gender-affirming care as a child in a place where gender-affirming care for minors has been restricted or banned. It's really important to trust kids when they tell us who they are and what they want. As guardians, we should be making space for age-appropriate means of self-expression, and I think it's really crucial to offer kids and young people alternative solutions when laws make certain changes such as top surgery or starting hormones inaccessible. This book is designed to help kids understand from an early age that they can still find creative compromises to hold them over until they're able to access the care that they need. In this story, our main character, Grey, is a child who wants a tattoo. Tattoos are a part of their family culture. They find a design that calls to them, and they spend a lot of time developing exactly the art that they want on their body. But they're too young for a tattoo, and this causes them distress. They come up with a solution on their own, it's just temporary tattoos, uh, that helps satisfy some of their needs while they wait to turn 18 and get the original design they came up with when they were eight. The end is super happy where they come together with the community from the tattoo shop that they go to on a regular basis from their childhood onward with their mother and the artists and the apprentices who were there from the very beginning. They have their 18th birthday party and they and their mom get that matching tattoo of that same design. So it's not a perfect allegory for transness and it's not meant to be. Um, this book isn't just for transgender kids, it is to help guardians and children together understand the importance of respecting bodily autonomy in an age-appropriate way and finding compromises when the initial idea that a kid has isn't necessarily feasible at the moment. Ideally, this book should inspire readers to come up with creative solutions to their problems and it should remind parents not to squash that creative spirit and the developing self-identity of their children. So, Grey Gets a Tattoo is available for pre-order now in ebook and paperback format on Amazon, and a link is in the description, so feel free to check it out. I would absolutely love to hear about your works in progress, books available you've got for pre-order in the comments, if you're considering crossing over genres or audiences from adult to children or vice versa, or you're looking into middle grade. I want to hear about all of it. Just leave it in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to everybody. Um, and thanks for watching. I will see you next Wednesday for another work in progress update on something that is entirely different from this and I've probably been working on for way too long. So happy Vlogoween and uh, I'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for watching today's video. In case you haven't heard, I recently released a set of new and old short stories through Storydome Publications annual thriller anthology, Distant Tales. This year's publication is titled Distant Tales Second Chapter, and I would love it if you would check it out. I did the editing and formatting on this thing, and I'm super proud of how it turned out. And of course, it has some amazing stories that will definitely get your blood pumping for the holiday season. As a side note, if you're an author who's looking for community, guidance, or publishing services, 
feel free to check out Story Den Publications. I work with them as an editor and formatter on a regular basis, and the founder, Tai Hakobo, is a close personal friend of mine, and I really believe in what she's trying to do. Her goal is really just to make indie authors' dreams come true at an affordable rate with high-quality services, so if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, check them out at the link below in the description. Thanks, and have a great day. for loud-ass plane. <laughs> <laughs>